What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Detach Garage. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Sean and this channel is all about helping you guys plan, design, build, and upgrade your garage. In today's episode, we're talking concrete, more specifically, foundations, footings, and slabs. Let's get started. Welcome back to Detach Garage, everybody. Again, in today's episode, we are talking concrete and more specifically foundations, footings, and slabs. Now, before we get started with this episode, I need to put a disclaimer out there. I am not a structural engineer and I am not an architect. The best thing to do specific to your application is talk to a structural engineer or an architect about what kind of soil you are gonna be building on. That is the number one thing that will help determine what type of foundation is best for your garage build. And speaking of that, that is the goal for this episode, is to get you guys comfortable talking to either a structural engineer or an architect so you can speak more intelligently to the question of what type of slab and foundation is best for your garage build. With that being said, let's jump right into it. 99% of all garages have some sort of slab for the flooring of that garage. There are some cases like a barn or a pole building or a lean-to that might have just a concrete pad or even some sort of crushed gravel as the flooring, but traditional garages have slabs the majority of the time. Now, in these garages, this slab cannot just act as the flooring, but it could also act as the, the foundation for that garage. And the most common type of slab slash foundation is a monolithic slab on grade. So I'll throw up a picture right now that kind of helps describe what this is. The thickness of your concrete. So if people say four inch concrete or six inch concrete, that's the thickness of the slab. But then if you're using your slab as a foundation as well, you're likely gonna have a thicker area on the edges. And this is the most common type of slab for garages, the monolithic slab on grade. And really all monolithic means is that it's all poured at the same time, even though there's two different uh, distinct thicknesses to that slab. The edges are much thicker since they are supporting the vertical load of the walls and also the horizontal load of the walls through wind and snow and, um, and rain and all of that. So that, edge needs to be thicker to help support that vertical load and also the horizontal load from uh, the elements outside. And that's the real difference between, in my opinion, a slab and a pad, where a pad is really just uh, a consistent thickness that's poured right on top of the ground, obviously with some prep work for uh, crushed gravel foundation and uh, crushed gravel underneath that pore of that, of that pad. Um, but when you get into a slab, you're really focusing on also supporting a weight of a building or supporting the weight of equipment or appliances, whatnot, inside of that um, future structure. Again, slab on grade construction is going to be by far the cheapest, number one, because you don't have to dig down as far and you're still doing pretty much the same amount of prep. You're also using less concrete to fill that in, but at the same time, you're, doing, you're trying to do two things with that piece of concrete. You're trying to support all the weight that's going in the building. Um, so on the floor, your cars, your toolbox, your equipment, your lift, and then you're also supporting the entire structure and having that slab be your foundation. Um, now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Again, talk to your architect and structural and engineer to see what type of soil you have. It might not be the best for your application, but it is certainly the cheapest um, because you're only calling trucks out to your facility one time to pour that concrete. Again, monolithic poured all at the same time. You're doing, you're trying to do a lot of different things with one 
recipe. And obviously, yes, there's thicker concrete on the outside of that slab, but overall, you're trying to do a lot of things. So if, with that one piece of concrete. So if you have a lift, if you have heated flooring, if you have heavy snow loads or heavy wind loads, those are all things that this might not be the best um, slab for you and foundation for you. All it really depends on the rest of your garage design, what's gonna be right for you. So there's two more categories that I'm considering very important from a monolithic slab on grade situation, frost protected and not frost protected. So up here in Wisconsin, we would absolutely want to do a frost protected monolithic slab on grade pour. The ground is frozen in the winter and you don't want to have shifting or of that slab, which can cause possible heaving and cracking. And then you've got to get into mud jacking and the, if it settles different and whatnot, it's just an absolute nightmare. So I would, if you are in a Northern state, again, consult your structural engineer or um, architect if you're kind of on that midline where you're not sure if your ground is freezing and thawing every winter. I'll put a few pictures up right now that show um, just again that general look of that thicker outer portion of that slab but then also the foam and the two areas of foam that help prevent frost from getting up underneath that slab that can lead to frost heaving and shifting of that, um, of that structure. And again, if you're just putting up a garden shed or something like that, it's not something that's extremely critical to shifting and yeah, it's gonna shift and settle a little bit, but if you're not putting a, lot, a ton of weight on there or if there's not a lot of secondary stresses through equipment and lifts and, and all that in there, you probably don't even need to do a true slab. You could probably even get away with a, just a normal concrete pad that's one thickness all the way across. The other three foundation options that you're gonna to wanna to think about are piers, posts, and footings. So piers, I'm not gonna get into all that much. This is more if you're carrying a super heavy load and you need to support that next um, structure up above it that's probably, I mean, we're talking like 12 inch concrete or even thicker. You're gonna put a bunch of piers in before you put that um, slab on top of it. This is how most skyscrapers are constructed or uh, large industrial buildings you're going to likely use, and again, depends on the type of soil, but you're gonna likely use a pier style of um, footing and foundation to help build and, and concentrate that strength and spread out that weight across a much larger area. Um, and that's really what a pier is best for. The next is post. So we've talked about pole barns, post-built uh, type structures. It's very simple. You are drilling a hole in the ground, uh, filling that with concrete to a certain depth depending on your soil and uh, different uh, diameter depending on your soil as well uh, with your building and your snow load and your wind load depending on that rating will, de will determine how what the diameter is and how deep you have to go and also what type of concrete you have to use. But then you're coming off of those, po those uh, footings with posts which will be your structure of your garage. That structure, um, once you have that built, then you can come back in and do the grading inside to actually pour your slab. So very clear distinction between a monolithic slab on grade where you're using that slab as your foundation with post, you're using those posts as your building foundation and then you're coming back in and putting a slab in that all of your, call it interior load is going to sit on and where your um, working space is going to be. So it's not monolithic because you're pouring those separately and then likely coming back in if you are going to have a, if you're gonna want concrete inside of that building that you're constructing. Foundation type number three, and this is the most common for buildings around my area, traditional construction, is footings. In Wisconsin, we have uh, footings with basements. Our 
very common up in this area. So I'll put a picture on the screen right now of what the difference is, and I'll try and put it next to the um, monolithic slab on grade, where you can see the differences between those two. When you do uh, call it a T footing style foundation, you're putting that footing on the bottom and then your foundation wall on top of that, and you're usually pouring that first. That can, you can also do footings and not do a poured foundation. You can do a block foundation um, and even a block building if you wanna get into that. You're connecting that footing all the way around. So where posts, you're doing separate pours for each one of those posts, the footing is actually connecting the entire structure. And then you have the foundation that sits on top of that, that goes above the grade. That's the load bearing structure that's carrying all the load of your building. And again, you can come back in separately and pour a slab. Again, it's not monolithic. You're doing the footing and the foundation first, and then you're coming back in and doing the slab. It really depends on your structure and your lot and what you're gonna do. Some people do the footing and the foundation very close to the slab pour, um, but it's still separate uh, in separate days, where you could also do the footing and the foundation, build the structure, and then come do the slab pour. Um, I haven't really found uh, good evidence on which way is best. I think it really depends on your lot and uh, the weather as well, but if you have better insight on that, throw me a comment down below. Let me know why you think it would be best to either uh, do a footing and foundation and then the slab right away, then build the structure, or if it's better to do the footing foundation, build the structure, and then do the slab after that. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. If we've got any concrete experts on this watching this, definitely put your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. This channel is all about learning and helping this community build awesome garages. All right, I know that was a lot of information. I hope it was educational for you. I spent a lot of time researching, trying to come up with and simplify this as much as I can uh, for you guys to help you ask better questions of your structural engineer and your architect. Uh, when you're designing and building your garage and when you're making decisions on how much um, budget you need to build your garage as well. So let's dive into what I'm doing for my garage. In the Wisconsin area, we definitely have cold and winter. So instead of doing a monolithic slab on grade, I'm going to do a T-style footing. And the reason I decided that is really because of my goals for having a heated slab. Is because that footing and foundation wall is what is holding the structure up. And that is its only job, is to hold up the structure, to stop the structure from swaying, and to be dedicated to that structure. I want those footings and that foundation to be focused on the structure, and I want my slab to be focused on supporting my lift, to be heating the building through that radiant heat flooring, and also I'm going to have a drain in that slab to drain the water out of the garage as well. So it's already going to be doing three things and that lift and that torsion and torque and all the different forces going into that slab and then add the, the mix of heat with pecs and, and fluid running through there. So a few things to think about when you are deciding what combination of foundation, footing, and slab to do for your garage build. So number one, utilities. In the south where they do a lot of slab on grade monolithic pours, um, you have to pre-locate all of your utilities. So your electrical, your drains, your water, everything's coming up through that slab to get access to the building. So when I'm doing a T-style foundation of footing and foundation wall, I really have one or two points where I'm <coughs> passing those utilities through uh, that foundation wall. So I do need to be conscious about that, but I need to be less conscious doing it that way than I would if I was doing a um, monolithic slab pour where that 
one piece of concrete is doing everything and I need to have everything pre-planned out. A little bit different, but just be thinking about that if you're considering um, doing slab on grade. The other thing you wanna think about is, are you going to do a drain in your slab? So are you going to drain water through and will your building code for your local area even allow you to do that? The other thing that kind of goes along with drains is the slope of the slab. So a lot of building codes have a minimum requirement for that slope to make sure that water is running out of the garage and away from the house if it's attached or even just in general, stop it from collecting in the garage. The other thing to think about is if you're doing radiant heating, if you're doing any, um, if you're doing any walls that'll need to be tied to the floor, if you're doing any uh, heavy equipment like lifts or tire balancers or anything like that that's gonna need a substantially thicker um, pad underneath it, you might have to go thicker in some cases or do kind of like a mini pier um, to help support a lift or something like that. And then also you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have keep out areas for your radiant heating if you are thinking about going hydronically heated. So my philosophy all about building my garage is to limit the amount of stress on that concrete and limit the amount of tasks that that concrete has to perform. So I want my footing and foundation to their only job is to support the vertical load and support the um, wind load as well. That's all I want it to do. The slab itself, I want that to support the lift, I want it to heat the garage, and I want it to have a drain to drain the water out of the garage as well. That's my philosophy around it. Let me know your thoughts on my philosophy around footings, foundation, and slabs. Put them down in the comments below. If you have any questions, I'm sure this won't be the last concrete video that I do. Uh, I'm sure we'll get way more in depth in the future, but I hope this episode was very educational for you guys and I hope it shed a little light. My philosophy shed a little light on why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them. Um, and I really hope we reach the goal of helping you guys to be able to have a better conversation with your structural engineer and your architect when talking about your garage build. I just want the world to be filled with a bunch of awesome garages. Is that so much to ask? Again, thank you guys for watching Detached Garage. We'll catch you on the next episode.